Got the dogs with me today. One of the things I want to talk about real quick is the term time under tension itself because the term itself is very misleading. It implies that as long as you subject the muscles to greater durations uh, in which they are under tension, then you'll promote a growth response. And while you can promote a growth response, it will not be optimal or maximal if you completely sacrifice the amount of weight that you're lifting in favor of uh, greater times under tension. Remember, there are two uh, components to the equation, load times time under tension. Anytime you sacrifice one element in favor of the other, you're sacrificing the end result. Both are very, very important. The load is required to force the muscles to be worked. And the time under tension means that over time, you will not just recruit the muscles, but you'll fatigue them. And obviously, if you want to build muscle, you need to both recruit and fatigue as many muscle fibers as possible. So the term itself, time under tension, is very misleading. A better term would be time under optimal tension or time under maximal tension because the load is still important. What people do to extend their times under tension is they will lift either a very, very light weight for a lot of reps or they will slow down the speed at which they lift the weight to accommodate greater times under tension. And both of these is... Uh, not going to promote the greatest growth response because the load is not optimal. Now, if you want to build the most amount of muscle possible, you need to understand that you have fast twitch fibers and slow twitch fibers. Fast twitch have a greater capacity to produce force, but they fatigue quicker. And slow twitch have a lower capacity to produce force. They rely on oxygen to produce force. And uh, therefore, because of that, they could produce force for a longer period of time. You can sustain force over time and if you want to build the most amount of muscle possible on your body you're going to want to recruit and fatigue as many of all of those fibers as possible and failing to do so would indicate that you are not going to get a maximal return on your investment of time and effort right Briggs exactly so one of the things you want to do is never ever sacrifice the amount of weight that you're lifting to facilitate greater times under tension because if all you focused on was time under tension, you're missing the forest for the trees. You're not seeing the bigger picture. So some people will say, oh, well, you know, I did like 30 or 40 reps or I, I took me like 10 seconds to do a rep and I did like six or eight reps and I got 60 to 70 seconds of tension. But the load was extremely suboptimal. Whereas if you lifted a weight that you could only perform maybe three to five reps and it took you 15 to 20 seconds to do so, but you did that four or five times, now we're talking of anywhere between you know, 60 and 75 seconds of tension with a significantly greater load. And what's going to have a greater impact on growth is the greater load times the time under tension. So the argument then could be, well... Yeah, I did 60 to 70 seconds of tension in that one set, so I, I did that four times. Well, now we're talking about 240 to 280 seconds of tension. Doesn't that count for anything, Ben? Well, let's look at it this way. If you went to a restaurant and it sucked, the food was fucking garbage, but they had big portions, would you be like, you know what, the food was shit, but I, had to, I got to eat a lot of it. You know, wouldn't you rather go somewhere where the quality is better, and if you want to eat more, you can simply order more. Obviously, it'll cost more, but it's of greater value and benefit to you because it tastes good. You know, I know for me, I wouldn't want to go somewhere and be like, oh, yeah, well, the food's shit. I just get extra uh, shit food. It's a great value, right? Not the case. So it's the same thing with your training. You don't want to just accumulate garbage uh, time under tension. You want maximal time under tension optimal time under tension now real quick what a lot of people will do is they'll follow these tempo prescriptions like four zero x zero uh you know four seconds to lower a weight you are stronger eccentrically so it makes even less sense to slow down your reps and extend your time under tension by doing it and the portion of the rep where the muscles are under the least relative amount of stress so I'll give you some numbers to, to kind of understand this. If you're lifting a weight that represents 75% of your max, and you can perform 10 reps under you know traditional uh, rep cadence, you just go up and down, you perform your reps traditionally the way you normally would, uh, with a 75% of what you can lift concentrically, but you're 20% stronger eccentrically. This means 
that the amount of weight you're lowering relative to what you could lower represents roughly 55% of that. Why would you want to increase the time under sub-maximal tension, under the least amount of tension? Now, there are benefits to performing slow eccentrics. It turns on mTOR more than any other type of contraction, which is responsible for promoting protein synthesis and building muscle. But you don't need to do all of your reps of all of your sets really, really slow to do that. You can lift a weight that you could lift, you know, 15 to 20 times and, and perform one or two sets of six. You know, even though you could do 15 to 20 reps, you do it slow enough on the eccentric to turn on mTOR to get that response. But after that, it's more about lifting the right amount of weight that's going to produce the greatest growth response. So, in closing, anything you read about, you know, studies of rep speed or time under tension, all you need to know to understand what the conclusion of the study is going to be is that there are two elements to the equation, load and time under tension. If you sacrifice the load for time under tension, you're sacrificing the end result. It's not about looking at the time under tension of one set. It's about looking at the accumulative time under tension and using a heavier load to accumulate greater times under tension. If you do that, you're putting yourself in the best position to build the most amount of muscle and strength possible. Obviously, you want to uh, manipulate your parameters to cater to the load or time under tension, but never sacrificing one for the other. So, if you like the information, feel free to share it. Click the fucking button at the bottom, subscribe to the channel, and I'll keep bringing it. So will Briggs, and so will Cannoli, these sleepy fucks.